This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. This episode of Do Go On was recorded live at Stupid Old Studios. And if you want to go back and watch this one in video form, you can absolutely do so by heading over to sospresents.com. You'll see a bunch of awesome shows that are available to you, including all of our live streams um, that are coming up over the next few weeks, including our big 250th episode celebration which is happening on the 1st of August. You can get a season pass as well and enjoy four shows for the price of three. That's sospresents.com for tickets. Enjoy! Welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Dave Warnicky, and as always, I'm here with Jess Perkins and Matt Stewart. Hello. 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 It's so good to be here inside the podcast with my two best friends in the world, Jess Perkins and Dave Warnicky. That's lovely. I've never Still, thought, thought about how we're... I shut you down every time you say it, and you, you keep... My besties. Oh, wow. All right. No, I'll reciprocate. The the two I trust my life with. Oh man! Oh, I that's don't like a bad that. choice. Yeah, <laughs> for me. <laughs> you shouldn't have picked me. Dave's hopeless. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm very capable. <laughs> Especially so that if they're like, cool. all right, to save Matt's life, you must cook a three course <laughs> meal. Oh no! Oh no! I'm Matt's so dead. sorry. Matt's yeah. dead. I'm, I wouldn't even walk into the kitchen. I just <laughs> accept that you were dead. <laughs> I just instantly start mourning <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> <laughs> just um, like RuPaul seeing that. Uh, guy drowning. All right, so um, <laughs> that, one, that might be one of those editing points. I'm Maybe. Not sure. Now you're just doing it on purpose. That. Apparently, RuPaul prayed instead of calling 911. <laughs> Thanks, RuPaul. Allegedly. Hey, uh, Dave, how does this show work? Uh, this show works where we take it in turns to report on a topic often suggested by a listener, and whoever's doing the report goes away, does a bit of research, brings it back to the group, and the other two people have no idea what the topic's going to be. This week it is Jess's turn to report. We always get onto topic with a pesky little question. Yeah, cheeky little question. My question this week is, <clears throat> a recent viral article compared real-life events to that of which classic novel? 1984? Basically, just think of novels, I guess. Uh, Classics. The Great Gatsby. Nah. Uh, sp- Spot Goes to the Beach. Oh, God, I wish. Uh, <laughs> what a day Spot had. You lift up the rock, there's a little crab in there. Love that. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> no. Uh, Poirot's Day at the Beach. Uh, and again, lift up the rock, murder. <laughs> uh, the little grey cell <laughs> said to lift up the rock. <laughs> oh. oh, murder weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Is that rude? Probably. Oh, it was adorable. A viral article. Viral. Okay. Um. Whoa. Okay. I'm, I'll think of how many uh, words. Give us a stronger clue. Five words. To kill a mockingbird. Nah. God, that was fast. Um, it's only four, four words. words. <laughs> no, no. It last, sounded good though. It the last good. word is an insect. I want to see if people are commenting along Bug? as well. Nah. Uh, fly, Lord of the Flies. Yes. <gasps> Lord of the Flies. Well done. Thank well you so much. done. Uh, technically, flies aren't insects. No, it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, there's technically a type of ant. So. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yes. So um, the well, I'll just start the report. I was going to just sort of editorialise a bit there, but I've written it all down. Yeah, let's so go I'll for just it. get started. Well, I this is very, very exciting. It might be you might have heard or seen the article, but I'll, I'll explain a bit of backstory first. Mm. So, in 1954, future Nobel Prize winning author William Golding published his allegorical novel, The Lord of the Flies, in which a group of prepubescent boys are stranded on a deserted island after surviving a plane crash. What happens next is a combination of power struggles, paranoia, mayhem and murder. Um, oh my God, it's the real life that. <laughs> Whoa. It's Whoa. the real life that. However... The novel is obviously fiction, and recently a viral story showed us that perhaps that's not quite how people would behave in that situation. There's a Dutch historian called Rutger Bregman, and he released a new book, Humankind, A Hopeful History, in May of this year. Now, he describes the book as being about a radical idea that most people deep down are pretty decent. Crazy. <laughs> he's, not, he's not fully going in there. They're pretty decent. Yeah, they're all 
right. Yeah. At a base level, they're okay. Yeah. Um, he tells stories of humanity and community in times of extreme crisis, like Hurricane Katrina and the Blitz of the Second World War. And when publicising his new book, he wrote an article for The Guardian about one of the stories he researched for humankind. Uh, and within four days, the article had been read over seven million times. Wowzers. It blew up. It went nuts. It spread all over the world. The article was titled, The Real Lord of the Flies. What happened when six boys were shipwrecked for 15 months? Oh, I did see this article getting around. That's yeah. a long time. I remember the article as well. Yeah. That is a, I did not remember it saying 15 months. Yeah. Yeah, that is a long time. So that's sort of what's how... That like three years? <laughs> Bloody hell. What's that, what's that in human years? <laughs> <laughs> Little boy years, 15 months, <laughs> yes, but human years? In human years? What is that? It's about three weeks, I think. Wow. Yeah, it was Still, a, that's a, a long holiday. Time. It was lovely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of how this story became globally known. I think it was uh, definitely a story that was known within their community, within their country. Yeah, but those boys and their families, they knew about it. They knew, knew the it. story. <laughs> um, their neighbours, they knew. Yeah. You know, people at parties. You know, so there was like people oh that God. knew about it. People at parties. They, you'd definitely bring that story. That's a, that's a great party story. You'd get sick of talking about it, I like, reckon. Oh, yeah, come, come here, Matt, come over here. Tell everyone about the time that you were shipwrecked for 15 <laughs> months. As a boy, when you were butter boy. When you were a tiny boy. So this is that story. So it all started in June of 1965 with six boys, all pupils at St Andrews, a strict Catholic boys' school in Nuku'alofa, which is the capital of Tonga. Ranging from, it says 13 to 16, but in another place I read about 15 to 17, but they're... Oh, they're all over the shop. I know. I reckon it's probably m- <laughs> more likely they're 15 to 17. Um, Sioni, Stephen, Colo, David, Luke and Mano had one main thing in common. They were bored. And boys. <laughs> they were boys <laughs> and they were bored. They were bored of schoolwork and desperate for some adventure. So they came up with a plan to go for a sail. Um, they thought maybe they'd see if they could make it to Fiji or even to New Zealand, which, by the way, they are in two different directions. So <laughs> probably make up your mind well, before I mean, you leave. It's in the same direction if you just keep going all That's the true. way around. That's true. Who knows what the wind's doing? Yeah. You know, you hoist that sail. Who so knows where we're going to end up? See what happens. You go to Fiji, you go to New Zealand, either or. I mean, Fiji was 500 miles or 800 kilometres away. That's ambitious. So it's pretty far. Yeah. New Zealand is in the opposite direction and way further. Usually it's the kind of thing where you get into it and you're like, see that island 20 metres over there? Yeah. Do you reckon we could go there? Let's do that. And then... You can't get there. <laughs> no, it's too hard. But that was their plan. Um, couple of obstacles. They didn't have a boat. Okay. Sailing is a lot easier with a boat. Would you say it's also... A sailboat in particular. Easier with sailing experience. Yes. They did not have that either. Uh. But how do you get sailing experience? First you get a boat. Yeah. <laughs> which they didn't have. Then you sail. Then you sail. Yeah, I agree. So I they're mean, basically, they're going for a swim. You can go on as many <laughs> boat simulators as you like. Yeah, and I've been on all of them. <laughs> but it's not the same as the real thing. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Drop the anchor. <laughs> um, you know, like I played heaps of Mario Kart and then I got my driver's license and I was like, whoa. Whoa, where are the bananas? <laughs> <laughs> where are those shell things? What? I'm not allowed to bump into other cars to uh, knock them off the road. Yuck. Oh, my God, Mum. Um <laughs> I've listened to Rod Stewart sailing heaps. And still, when I got in a boat, I fell right off. I, I love no Enya. Idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've listened to all those songs. <laughs> Shipping Up to Boston by the Dropkick Murphys. I've listened to these tracks. Yeah. My, my favourite show growing up was Ship to Shore. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> Great song. That's all the experience you need. Well, let's... Let's not go on a boat journey, I think, maybe. <laughs> well, I still want to do a podcast in international waters. Yeah, we'll make and that I, happen. I've got no international waters experience. It's not stopping me. How about Hermes and Darkus? Maybe one of the great villains on the small screen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that is. Oh, Kirk, was it? Is he the bad boy with red hair? Someone I really could grow up looking up to. Was it Kirk? Dave, do you remember? I can't remember any characters' names. Uh, so sorry. You told me it was your favourite show. show. It's my favourite show. Ago. I don't know anything about oh. it. It's my favourite. Anyway, so yeah, they don't have sailing experience or a boat. So they decided to borrow a small 24-foot, so 7.3 metre boat from a fisherman that they didn't like. <laughs> it's a bit of a grumpy old man. They thought, we'll just take his boat. We'll borrow it. 
Now, if you're going out on a sailing adventure, what kind of things do you think you might pack? A boat. Boat, great. Okay, got like that. a spare boat? Yeah. Yeah, that's a, smart. Like a dinghy. Yeah. I suppose. What else might you take? Uh, food. Yep. Fresh water. Great. Uh, medical supplies. Medical supplies. Citrus fruits for scurvy. Oh, of course, yeah. Lack of vitamin C. But um, maybe a map. Yeah, map. Compass. Fif- Fifteen months of supplies. Fifteen months of supplies for what you assume is going to be a pretty short journey. Yeah, yes. Tent. A tent. Yep. Uh, building Shelter. supplies. Building supplies. Bricks. Mortar. Okay. Oh, Cement that's mixer. Good. Mm. Magic. Uh, an architect. <laughs> Magic okay, they're just, they're just going on like a bit Engineers. of a sale. I don't think they're planning on starting a new... An Oculus Rift, so I could <laughs> pretend I'm sailing <laughs> in 3D. <laughs> they're on a boat using an Oculus Rift. Oh, but the, yeah. But you the, can, you can smell out. the salt. <laughs> but they're stuck in a storm and they're like, I don't like this. Calm waters for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is beautiful. Oh, that's lovely. I'm catching a fish. <laughs> I've caught three fish. Oh, why am I so wet? <laughs> Because I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they didn't pack maps or a compass. No map or compass. They did take two sacks of bananas. Oh, yeah. I love a sack of anything. Yeah. A few coconuts. <laughs> sack. How do you, how do you? I mean, they come in a bunch already. I know. I put them into a sack. I'm not sure how many bananas. I'm imagining fairly large sacks, <laughs> but who knows? Yeah. How many bananas do you reckon's in two sacks? You don't get, why, if it's you don't call it a sack if it's small. Yeah, you're right. Is that a pouch? That becomes a pouch. A bag. Or a, is satchel <laughs> short for sack? Is that small sack? Satchel? <laughs> satchel. I don't, satchel. I don't think Do you so. think? I don't, I don't Have I finally cracked that no, old code? We're disagreeing with Scientists you. Scientists have been oh looking into that for eons, <laughs> which is like three or four decades. Wow, but how many in Multiplied. kids' years? <laughs> oh, God. It's hard to do the maths on that. <laughs> so, yeah, they've got. Two sacks of bananas, which <laughs> who knows how many that is, I mean, but it's not a satchel. It, it must be a lot. Yeah, it's yeah. probably a few few coconuts and a small gas burner. That's it. Sacks of bananas, a yep. couple of coconuts. A couple of coconuts. Take lots of coconuts. Mm. Um, so one evening, they snuck onto the boat and they took off. No one seemed to notice the boat leaving the harbour. So their journey started off well, but that first night, they made the mistake of falling asleep. Oh. oh, no. Oldest trick in the book, <laughs> sleeping at night time. In the middle of the night, they awoke to giant foaming waves crashing over the boat. Oh, I grabbed the Oculus. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is awful. Oh, that's better. <laughs> they hoisted the sail, which was promptly destroyed. Next to go was the rudder. So now they have no way to steer the boat. Oh. They started their steering wheel, right? Yeah, but it was, at this point, ornamental. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So they were stranded in the middle of the ocean. Without food, water or any supplies, they drifted for eight days. Okay. They tried to catch fish with no success. They collected rainwater in the you coconut said, shells. You said drifted. Do you mean rifted? Like Oculus rifted? <laughs> yeah, they rifted. This is sick. <laughs> <laughs> they took turns. Was, you know. Look, there's Big Ben. <laughs> I'm in London. I'm in London. <laughs> <laughs> All the boys by one are going, oh, this is a nightmare. One of them goes, oh, well, I'm coming up. Jolly good day. <laughs> He's having a great time for now. Um, so, that, yeah, they collected rainwater in coconut shells and they shared it around by taking one sip each in the morning and one sip at night. That's yeah. all they had. You'd be policing the sip pretty hard, wouldn't yeah. you? Everyone's watching you take that a sip. That's a gulp, buddy. Oh, yeah. That's Come borderline on. gulp. Spit it back. You don't get you don't get any water tonight. No. Yeah. Oh no. Damn it. Two, everyone knows two sips is a gulp. <laughs> That's something I would have also packed, a desalination plant. Oh Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that would have been smart on a small mm. boat. Should have yeah. done it. Mm. Should have done it. Um, Sioni tried to boil seawater to drink using the little gas burner that they had, but it tipped over burning his leg oh, it's like just things just not that going is well unlucky. so is that a thing you can do you boil the salt out of the water that's cool i didn't know about that i've never heard that i reckon we should fact check that before we go on our boat <laughs> on our boat <laughs> things are going very well at do go on <laughs> we've got a fleet yeah. um so on the eighth day they spotted land the land that they spotted was Atta, an uninhabited island 160 kilometres or 99 miles south-southwest of uh, Tongatapu, which is the main island of Tonga. That's so exciting. 
It hadn't always been uninhabited. In fact, in June of 1863, about 350 people were living on Atta. And the Tasmanian captain Thomas James McGrath of the whaler, Grecian, decided that whaling wasn't profitable enough. He was going to go into slave trading. Oh. So he came along to Atta and invited the islanders on board for trading. This was pretty normal. Islanders were used to trading with passing ships, stuff like pigs, chickens, sugarcane, potatoes, all sorts of stuff. It was very normal. So he's arrived and said, hey, come on board for some uh, trading. Um, So they did. But once almost half the population was on board, doors and rooms were locked and the ship sailed away. 144 people never returned. He just turned up. And took half the population of this island. Whoa. That's fucked. It's insane. So King George... When was that? In 1863? Yeah. That is not that long ago. No. And the King of Tonga at the time, having heard of these kidnappings, sent three ships to Atta to evacuate and resettle the rest of the the people who lived there. So... All of a sudden, it's gone from being... It's a small island and it's gone from being this lovely community of 350 people to being uninhabited. Right. It's ghost town. So there's still, like, there's still stuff there for for the boys to live in and whatever. A hundred years later. hundred years. Yeah. So it's nice and antique-y. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what it's I'm looking history. for. Yeah, I just want... I want these walls to talk, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, new. So ugh, yucky. Ugh. It's just stale. It's got mm. no low personality. Yeah. I want I want the wood to be soaked in history, mm. you know, that sort of thing. And I guess, yeah, this would be. They would have had, like, you know... Um, you know, turn of the century. Uh, I don't know how to talk about houses, but fuck, imagine <laughs> if I could. It would have been a lot of fun. It would have been really, that would have been a fun of riff. the century. I thought I was, some of my brain would have led like to something. You'll get somewhere with that. But it didn't. Here it comes, here it comes. Cornices. Yeah, oh, look at the ceiling. Oh, what a beautiful <laughs> sconce. <laughs> mm. Um, so back to the story 100 years later in 1965 when the boys had spotted land. By the time they actually drifted close enough to the island, it was really late at night. Uh, Mano swam ashore to suss out if the island was – to see if it was safe. And despite not being a massive distance to swim, it took him a long time because he was so weak from lying in the boat for eight days without food and water. Mm. Um, this is a quote from him. What does that tell you? Uh, when I reached the shore, I tried to stand up. But when I stand up, the whole world is spinning. So I laid down and crawled ashore. And when I touched the dry grass, I lie down. (laughs) The other boys were calling out to him, trying to see if he was okay and if it was safe. But he was too weak to stand and signal them. So he just yelled out that he was alive. (laughs) I'm alive. Wait, what are you saying? You're alive? Yes, I'm alive. (laughs) Mate, we can't, can't quite make out what you're saying. Are you alive? <laughs> yes. Yes. More. Oh. <laughs> no. Nah, Stand not. up if you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking go. I need a rest. So the others slowly also made their way to land. Nah, this island, it's, um, it's yeah, it killed me straight away. Sorry, guys. <laughs> You'll have fun on your own island. Bye. Bye. Yeah, Stay cl- long. <laughs> he claims it. <laughs> Mine. So anyway, yeah, the others come, uh, make their way onto the land as well. And he said... We were very happy, but the first thing we did was we said a prayer, thanked God for for what he brought us to. Then, desperate to quench their thirst, they hunted seabirds, drank their blood and drained their eggs. Holy shit. What a way to quench a thirst. I know. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yep. But you've also got to be pretty skilled and talented to do that. Yeah. Because if if we were there, we'd be like, that's a... That's a good idea, but how are we going to get that? <laughs> yeah, you reckon? Yeah. Oh, I mean, that, yeah, sure, that's a great idea <laughs> to kill a seabird and drink its blood to quench your thirst. It's a great idea. And we've got a little gas burner, so I guess we could cook the chicken, the, the meat or something. No, no, no I, just want the, I, just, I just want the blood. How do I get that blood into this cob? <laughs> that's all I'm asking. we got eggs. You could, you could eat the egg, eggies. Mm, how do how I get the blood egg? out of these eggs? <laughs> is this, this a, the kind of island that you can, you know, you can see one side of it, like a tiny island, or is it... It's a bit bigger than that, but it's it's quite small. Because um, yeah, you, go, I'd be my first instinct would be to find a water source. Yeah. Fresh water. Yeah. But I like that they went straight to killing birds. They yeah. went straight <laughs> to fresh blood. You like that? It's good. 
So after they got some sustenance, they collapsed and fell asleep, the sunrise waking them the next day. They survived initially on fish, coconuts, tame birds, and obviously the bird eggs as well. Tame birds. Well, later when they got to the top of the island, they did a little bit of exploring. They found an ancient volcanic crater where people had lived a century before. There the boys discovered wild wild taro, a root vegetable, bananas and chickens, which had been reproducing for the hundred years since the last time it's left. There's like six million chickens in this hole. There's so many chickens. (laughs) So they're like, oh, my God. They found vegetables. They found chickens. (laughs) It's a paradox. They're like, oh, my God. Not for the chickens anymore. (laughs) It was a chicken paradox. (laughs) (laughs) And the chickens are like, like, this is living. What the fuck is that? Oh, God, they're back. (laughs) How old are these chickens? (laughs) A hundred years old. No, but they're just reproducing and just living... Not like just living their best lives. Oh, that does sound nice. Chicken Island. (laughs) They named it Chicken Chicken Island. Island. So Stephen, Not very inventive, chickens. <laughs> <laughs> One of the boys, Stephen, he managed after several failed attempts to light a fire using two sticks. That old, we've all tried, hmm. uh, and he managed. Um, so first, one, first man to ever do it. <laughs> wow, he invented fire. Well, yeah, it's pretty crazy. That's where fire came from. One of the plot points in the book, Lord of the Flies, is around the fire and how it has to be maintained in case of passing planes. And, of course, one of the kids abandons his responsibility and the plane goes by and they don't get rescued and it's this whole big Uh. fight uh, in the book. But in real life, these boys tended the fire and it burnt for the entire time they were trapped on the island. Wow, that's cool. So they agreed to work in teams. They were in, they sort of paired up and they had a strict roster for garden, kitchen and guard duty. Because now that they've found these vegetables and stuff, they so they created their own little garden where they planted veggies. So they'd grow their own food and stuff. And yeah, the tarakash roots or whatever. Tarakash roots. <laughs> <laughs> if arguments occurred, the people involved would go to opposite ends of the island to cool off. <laughs> Think about oh, what they've done. It's very mature. It is. And after a few hours, they'd come back together and the others would make them apologise to each other. <laughs> Do it. Say it. Say sorry. No, like you mean it. Yeah, that was always the thing when you were a kid. Mean it. Remember, you'd go, sorry. Like you mean it. You're like, oh, sorry. <laughs> That's better. better. <laughs> yeah, his parents go, I can't be bothered. This yeah. Well, you oh, whatever. I tried. Yeah, <laughs> um, Mano says, That's how we stayed friends by cooling off and apologizing. Good lesson for everyone. Their days began, began and ended with song and prayer. Colo fashioned a makeshift guitar from a piece of driftwood, half a coconut shell and six steel wires salvaged from their wrecked boat and he used it to lift their spirits. He'd play guitar. Oh. That is so amazing. And yeah. you know the song he played? It's a very good guitar. I think one of them, I think it's Peter. Still has that guitar. Wow. And that cool. was actually the first Gretsch guitar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the White Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> what year was this again? 65. Yeah. Guitar was invented in 65. Wow. As but with all stories. Geez, that's so close to an important year. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> they're there for 15 <laughs> months. <laughs> yes. Shut up, shut up. I get to shut say up. it. <laughs> As with all stories like this, though, things just, you know, really don't go there well. They tried constructing a raft in order to leave the island, but it fell apart and the crashing surf, the water was too strong. Um, another time, Stephen slipped and fell off a cliff, breaking his leg. <laughs> Sorry, I just didn't. Fell off a cliff is quite <laughs> fell dramatic. Off a cliff, it's like, whoa, oh yeah. my God. So he broke his leg and the other boys climbed down and helped him back up to the top where they set his leg using sticks and leaves. These boys are so resourceful. Yeah, it's amazing. I would I would die so fast, <laughs> mostly because I'd give up. I'd be like, oh, it's too hard. You wouldn't have made it to Chicken Island. There's no coffee here. <laughs> <laughs> what? We've only got a sack of bananas and coconuts on oh, day one. I don't like coconut. The sale is still working at this point and you've yeah. already given I'm up. I'm like, oh. You get there, it's a cafe, but it's like a, a chain. You're like, a oh. Starbucks. oh, oh no. I guess I'll have a caramel frappuccino or but something. But what's the point? Oh. There's only so much. You time. don't have bagels. <laughs> I done. forget you're a, you're, a, you're a bit of a coffee snob. Big time. Big time. That's why I'm enjoying this dare iced coffee. Yeah, well, I mean, it's the coffee snob's choice of iced coffee. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and also the Saints, one of the Saints' <laughs> major sponsors. Saints, a little team that I might reference uh, 
in the coming months. In the coming 15 the months. <laughs> So over the following months, the boys set up a number of things to survive. Like I said before, they had a small little commune with a food garden. Um, they had hollowed out tree trunks to store rainwater. Apparently they had a badminton court and a gym. <laughs> like they they just found heavy things to make weights. But I want to go back to the badminton court. <laughs> yeah. All the, were they badminton... They just well, they were boys. They thought shuttlecock was a funny word, <laughs> and they go, "Well, let's right. let's give ourselves a reason to say that every day." <laughs> Pass the shuttlecock, David. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like w- we did a Patreon bonus episode, Dave, where uh, you got us to say our f- our desert island discs. Mm. Oh, that's right. Yeah, our favorite albums and one luxury item if we were ever trapped on an a- island. And this island sounds a lot like our mm. the island we created with a gym. <laughs> yeah. I did say a cafe. cafe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just as luxury item was a cafe. Yeah, but we could also work there so we could earn some money. Yeah. <laughs> Pocket money. <laughs> <laughs> to spend at the cafe. Um, they had chicken pens and, yeah, the fire that was burning always. Oh, it's like the Olympic torch. The flame. Yeah, the eternal flame. It's, a, it's sort of like the bangles. Was that Bananarama? Which is what I call a sack of bananas. <laughs> <laughs> I get those two they bands. They had two banana ramas on board <laughs> with them. Um, so yeah, obviously this. I mean, I'm talking about it like, oh, it sounds so nice. It obviously was a terrible time. But they've done the best you can do in this time. Absolutely, and they've worked really well together as a team. So then, Sunday, the 11th of September, 1966. Oh, September 11, 1966. That is so close to. The grand final mm-hmm. day, September 1966. As I wrote it, I was like, oh, it's so close so to the grand final. That was a couple of weeks before. Yep. So, yeah, so 1966, that reminds oh, me great. of the I'll fact. Great, I'll have a sip. Um, the, my team, the St Kilda Saints, uh, won their one and only VFL-AFL premiership. Mm. Well, uh, to, to this point, if you're listening to this in a few years' time, it'll be one of two. But at this point, yes, just the one. Uh, when Barry Breen kicked that famous wobbly punt for a point. What'd you call me? <laughs> <laughs> You're a wobbly <laughs> c- Dave. <laughs> oh, no. oh no! Oh no! Oh no! You said it. That was not intentional. <laughs> Can we play that? Nah. <laughs> oh, that's good fun. <laughs> okay. So, so September 11, 1966. A Tasmanian man named Peter Warner, who was out in his fishing boat, was making his way back to Australia from Tonga, where he'd unsuccessfully asked to fish for lobster in Tongan waters. The king had said, nah. So he's on his way home. Um, and luckily he was denied because he took a detour to outside Tongan waters to see if he could have any luck fishing. And do you get a personal meeting with the king? Yeah. Back then. I don't know if now. That I'm sure now. That is so cool. But also you got rejected. But that's exactly, cool. Exactly, yeah. Um, but in person. Got rejected in person exactly. by the king. Because you usually get a rejection letter. It feels so impersonal. But when the king slaps you across the face and says, piss off. Yeah. You on, on your 100th birthday, yeah. you get a, a personalised rejection letter from yeah. the queen. <laughs> yeah. My grandparents got a letter from the queen recently for their 70th wedding anniversary. And they were sort Amazing. of like... A bit disappointed because it was the same picture that came in the 60th wedding anniversary letter oh. they got. And I'm like, well, stop being married for so long. <laughs> yeah. It's divorce crazy. divorce already. Is it too late to be an old? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Objection. <laughs> so uh, the queen, does the queen like pen it herself God, or she no. just signs it or someone stamps her signature Yeah, on they're it. just like bulk letters where they just put in your name. Oh, that's I mean, the queen's busy. But Is anyway. She? Oh, my horsies. Oh, I've got some dogs. She's got horsies and dogs, mate. But she's not looking after him. Somebody else is doing that. Yeah. Oh, my God. Imagine just being in charge of looking after dogs. Yeah, there's a professional dog person. Whoa. What a nightmare. <laughs> also known I mean, as I a guess vet. if I just got a dog, then I would be in charge of looking after a dog. Whoa. Yeah, you could get a dog. We could get a dog club on the show. That'd be fun. Get yeah, a dog. Matt. Anyway. Sorry, so, sorry. September 11th. So he's. I know. I'm just so excited. Gone outside of Tongan waters for a bit of an extra fish. Yeah, he's just he's just gone fishing. He's no he's in no rush to get home. And there in the distance, he saw Atta. He knew of the island and its history, so he knew no one was living there. But he noticed something odd. 
there were burnt patches on the green cliffs. Oh, no, there's an arsonist. <laughs> and he thought, that's a bit odd because, you know, we're in the tropics. Spontaneous fires don't really happen that much. Huh, that's weird. So he, st- he decides to investigate and he gets kind of close to the island and one of the crew on his boat says pe- he can hear yelling and he's like, that's just birds. Like, it's not... Ah. <laughs> 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 it sounds, <laughs> sounds like one of them's yelling, Help! <laughs> Help. 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 Oh no! That's a sick bird. Yeah, that is an inbred chicken. That's a really sick bird. We should stop and help it. <laughs> he goes on the island to put this bird out of its misery. <laughs> <laughs> he just karate chops. <laughs> And I'm done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, You're welcome. You're welcome. I did the right thing there. You're at, you're at peace now. Yep, <laughs> I'm a hero. <sighs> so, anyway, as they approach the island, he has a look through his binoculars and sees a boy. This naked, long haired boy leapt from the cliff into the water and started to swim towards the boat. Oh, man, I'd be turning the boat around. <laughs> that sounds terrible. That sounds like the ring. Yeah, or exactly. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> and they were quite. Concerned, because all of a sudden there's more boys in the water <laughs> swimming towards the boat and screaming at the top of their lungs. <laughs> the That's phrase, horror film the stuff. Phrase, all of a sudden there's more boys in the water. <laughs> Every oh. look, there's boys coming in. Multiplying. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> Where are all these boys oh coming from? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jump scares. Yeah. Boy. Oh, yeah, boy. This one you think, oh, it's safe. I'll come out again. Boy. Boy. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> In my head, I'm imagining toddlers too, like the least scary boy. (laughs) But when they're unexplained and all in the water, coming at you. Kids are the scariest. That's why they use them in horror films all the time. Especially they're like, got little English accent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hello. Help me, daddy. (laughs) (laughs) Unless you're English. Yeah. Then it'll be normal, I guess. And your kid is just asking for help or something. Like, it's holding a jar of peanut butter saying, can you open this? Help me, daddy. That's all context. You're the queen. That's pretty normal for you. (laughs) All English dads are just terrified all the time. (laughs) Oh, no. I'll put down the peanut butter, son. (laughs) Where did you come from? Help me, daddy. Help me, daddy. In this case, the boys aren't aren't saying that they're saying (laughs) 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 yeah (laughs) and the crew on the ship loaded their guns oh okay because because the boys were coming (laughs) the boys are back in town they were aware that at the time polynesian custom was a lot of the time they would dump dangerous criminals on remote islands oh so they're like criminal boys oh (laughs) we could be in a bit of danger here right so Stephen reached the boat first, and luckily for the boys, they were able to speak English. And Stephen said, there are six of us, and we reckon we've been here 15 months. Peter was quite sceptical, but he radioed um, to Nuku Alofa and told them that he had six boys with, with him who claimed to be students of St Andrews. He gave their names, and the operator called the school to confirm if they were pupils. He was just like, you know, let's make sure these... I'm not bringing criminals back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, People at the office are like, um, yeah, and tell those boys they're in trouble. Yeah. That is 15 months of class. <laughs> they're going to have to repeat year 10. <laughs> um, 20 minutes later, the operator came back and said, you found them. Uh-huh. So Peter and his crew turn back and take the boys back to Tonga, where hundreds of people apparently turned up to celebrate their return. Their families rejoiced. They'd had funerals for their sons. Like they had assumed that the boys had died. So they're thrilled. But also waiting when they arrived... With the police. Because it turns out the grumpy boat owner was still pissed that his boat was stolen and was pressing charges. <laughs> like a real piece of shit. So the boys were... <laughs> the real piece of shit. He had his boat stolen. What a dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey? Oh, you're upset that's your boat was... <laughs> your livelihood was taken from you? Oh, that's upset you. Oh, Why are you <laughs> siding with this guy? Everyone's so happy these kids are back and he's like, yeah, back in prison. <laughs> Back they go. Yeah, no, it is weird. He's not like, oh, my boat, Where's my, is my boat okay? No. And they say, no, we, we broke it. Yeah. But we're alive. Well, I wish it was the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Never break anything of Matt's. <laughs> Never break Roger my that. boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't don't, don't break my boat. Dare break That's why we had boat. to get three boats. Matt would not share. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> Two of them are very, my spare boat. Very generous about a lot of things, except boats. Um, so uh, I must say as well that the boys were all in really good physical condition, which you might not expect because they've been stuck on an island for 15 months. But they've all got sick rigs. <laughs> they look great. So there was a doctor that assessed them all and was amazed at their muscular physiques. Because I had the gym and the badminton. Oh, yeah. And they're all, you know, they're just they're having to catch food. And yeah, nothing but yeah. protein. Chicken, chicken, chicken. Well, like yeah. it, and they're young. That. They're teenage boys. Like they're we get unfit because we sit to work all day <laughs> and don't do anything. Yeah, I know. If your life is active, you're probably going to be pretty fit. I guess so. Um, and the doctor even said they did a great job with Stephen's broken leg, which had healed perfectly. No. Wow. That is impressive. The leaves. The leaves and, and I'm twigs. I'm like, leaves... That's not going to do it. Yeah, what are the I'm picturing doing? little gum leaves, though. They're probably big palm leaves. Yeah, they're probably I made was also like a f- picturing his leg like that and they're just, they're just dropping. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be right, man. Old mul- <laughs> mulchy <laughs> leaves on top. Again, that's us on the island. <laughs> yeah, us going, oh, no. I think these boys have a bit more experience. <laughs> well, the eucalyptus. It's a beautiful smell. Oh, oh so, yeah. so soothing. Yeah, yeah. Matt's got a broken leg. Smell this. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be right. Anyway, so the boys are stuck in jail and Peter came up with a plan. So it occurred to him that the story of their shipwreck was perfect Hollywood material. Now, something I didn't mention was that Peter was the youngest son of Arthur Warner, one of the richest and most powerful men in Australia. Peter worked for his father's company and managed the company's film rights and new people in TV. So from Tonga, he called up the manager of Channel 7 in Sydney, said, you can have the Australian rights, give me the world rights. So he uh, paid the boat owner £150 for his old boat and got the boys released on the condition that they would cooperate with the movie. So a few what? days later, a team from Channel 7 arrived. Wait, can you say that again? What? what so they're sort of... What? He basically sold the rights to their story. The guy that rescued them. To get some money to pay off the boat owner. Oh, okay. So he was doing it to help them, sort of. Yes. Well, were, were they in on it, the boys? Did he? An excellent point. So... A note, a note here is when the article first came out, it was criticised, rightly so, because it was told from the perspective of the white man who saved them. It was all about Peter Warner. And it also brushed over why the island was uninhabited and uh, when the boys had arrived and the dark history of the island. And people were frustrated that Peter sold the boys' story as if he had any ownership over it. Yeah. Um, and after this criticism was voiced, The Guardian followed up with another article which actually interviewed Mano, one of the boys. And when asked about that criticism, he said, I know a lot of people say to me things about Mr Warner making money from our story, but who cares? If there wasn't Mr Warner, we wouldn't have survived um, and we wouldn't be here to tell our story. So if he makes some money for it, from it, good luck to him. That's my opinion. Okay. So, and, and I'll go into it a little bit more at the end as well. I don't think he has made money from it. And the Channel 7 crew turned up. If There's a whole big section about it in the book, Humankind, where they, like, took this film crew to the island and it was just, like, a big mess because they're, like, Channel 7 reporters, the news reporters trying to, like, trek through a really hard mountain, like, island and, like, oh, it's hard. And it didn't go well. And you well. said that was from Channel 7, Sydney. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Sydney. Good luck out there in the bloody bush. Sydney mm. types, you know, with their buddy <laughs> cups of tea or whatever they do yeah. up in the big smoke. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, enjoy your bridge. There's <laughs> <Yeah>. no bridges <laughs> here. <laughs> we wade through rivers, thanks. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> oh, you want to go to an opera house? Well, unfortunately not. No, thank <laughs> no you. No opera over here. <laughs> <laughs> we, we only have a badminton court. <laughs> so, so anyway, for saving the boys, Peter was a national hero in Tonga. The king thanked him for rescuing the boys and asked if there was anything he could do for him. Peter asked if he could start a business in Tonga to trap lobster. The king was like, sure thing. That's what he, wa- so that's what he wants. That's what he wanted all along. He wants to start it? a business. So Peter went back to Sydney, resigned from his father's business and had a new fishing boat made. And then he returned to Tonga and hired the six boys as crew for his new fishing boat. The name of the boat was Atta. <laughs> <laughs> don't know how great, you know, maybe they don't want to be reminded, but... You know, I mean, the boys had wanted adventure. That's why they took off in the first place. Yeah, and he was like, bored. well, you can see the world now. Yeah, that's amazing. And he hired them all. You can see the world. Well, look, I might be overselling. You can see some lobsters. <laughs> mm. Lobsters of the world. <laughs> yeah. How would you guys like to earn some lobsters? And they're like, $20, $20 notes? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, sorry. Literally, literally lobsters. <laughs> I pay you in lobsters. I'm going to pay you in lobsters. Um, so a couple of points of like, what we were talking about there. That's ba- I mean, that's basically the end of the story. Obviously, they all made it home 
and they were fine. And the story wasn't all that widely known outside of Tonga until a couple of months ago. But, um, yeah, like I said, it was it was uh, criticised for a few things. There's a Tongan author and storyteller, um, Malika Gesa Fatafai, and she took issue with the story's colonial lens. This is a quote from her. She says, The original article could have done more for the six men. The story should have been told by a Tongan. The story should have been told by the men themselves and their families. This is their story, will always be their story. The article doesn't mention how the boys felt or why they made the choices they made. It lacked their perspective. It lacked a, the very Tongan story, uh, lacked the very Tongans the story was about, with the exception of Mano. But even then, Mano was sidelined. He deserved to share his story how he would want to. And Mano himself um, said that while he isn't quite ready to tell his story, he thinks maybe he'll write a book with the help of his grandchildren. Um, and the main reason he wants to do that is so that his family will be secure, but his grandkids will have some money when he's gone. Because he's like... in his 70s now and he lives in Queensland. Ah. It does sound like that initial article was just kind of poor journalism if it missed out getting their perspective i know and so what that's what's hard about it too because it was an excerpt from the book and in the book he does go into more detail right. and he has interviewed a couple of the boys and i'm not defending but like you know you've got to break it down for word limits for a, a, an article so it was just sort of like here's a here's an interesting story but it was mostly i mean it was told by a, a dutch historian uh, from the perspective of the white Australian who found them, which I mean, is amazing, and they're obviously very grateful for him, but it's like, maybe reframe it a little bit. All right. Well, you're a journalist. Yes. By trade. Me, yes. Yeah, yeah that's true. How, how do you see it? Well, I'm certainly not helping by being another white person telling the story, but uh, for now, it's sort of the only written formal telling of the story, that, and, and that's why it is widely known, and... I did read that there have been talks about a film um, with uh, Peter Warner, but also the four, I think four of them are still alive. That they're all part of the discussion. Is um, it going to be made by uh, Channel Seven as a, t- <laughs> a telly movie? Well, a lot of people have uh, have said it needs to be done by Tongan people, not like when we had Ethan Hawke playing a Uruguayan rugby player in Alive from one of our really? past stories. Yeah. Yeah, well, he the played most... the main guy. Remember Nando, the one who oh, climbed right. out. It was played by Ethan Hawke. Oh, he can, jeez, he can act the hawk. <laughs> yeah, he can transform. Um, so hopefully, the story can be told by them themselves, whether that's in book or in film. But I just thought that is a pretty amazing story of survival and the human spirit. We love survival story. Love here, a survival yeah. story. Love survival story. That yeah. is that is quite amazing. Mm. Fifteen months. And the, yeah, like you say, they were seventeen at max. Yeah, they didn't even know the Saints were winning that premiership. They didn't oh. know. That would have been the not... hardest thing for them to come back to. You know, they broke the drought when we were what? on a deserted island. Oh no, we missed the wobbly punt. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if that was one of their first questions. Yeah. Did the Saints win? Did that would be up? your first question. <laughs> if you were away for fifteen months, have the Saints won in the last year? Imagine if you missed be when a premiership. That's when it would happen. Imagine. It's just oh, that's such a. A wild story. So there's not that uh, there isn't a version of it written where we know sort of their day to day in more detail yet. But that yeah. will hopefully be coming because that would be fascinating to know. Yeah. Obviously. Wow. Yeah. How do they like? How how many chickens did they eat? Did they go? We can't eat too many chickens. Mm. We need them to keep breeding so we can eat more of these chickens. I know. Did it's, they drink um, wet eggs every day? <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's that's the story. Well, that brings us to everyone's favourite section of the show, the Fact, Quote or Question section, which has a little jingle that's topping the charts around the world, I believe, <gasps> right now. And it goes remix, something like the this. The remix is, yes. It goes, Fact, Quote or Question. Ding, 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 It's really good. He always remembers the ding. Now, the way this one works is people... Who support us on Patreon on the Sydney Schoenberg Deluxe Memorial Edition Rest in Peace level get to give us a fact, a quote, or a question. They get all sorts of different rewards as well. They get to vote on two out of three topics, the third, of course, being personal choice by the report giver. Uh, They also get three bonus episodes a month, including a bonus report, a quiz type thing, or something else random like that, or uh, a 
Phrasing the Bar episode, which is a new podcast exclusive to Patreons, where we talk about the films of Brandon Fraser. Oh, man. Oh, we got uh, a good one coming month, up. What are we talking about? It'll be School Ties, this one. School Ties. Yeah. Yeah. So, Matt Damon? Yep. Oh, wow. It's an all-star cast and Fraser leading role. Mm. And uh, the other, probably, maybe even the the, the most exclusive uh, benefit you get for being on this level of Patreon is getting to give us a fact, a quote, or a question. Mm-hmm. And uh, this week, because oh, I don't have my computer here, Jess has taken over the role. Big shoes to fill. Also, because I'm perfectly capable. That's Big you know. shoes to yeah. fill. <laughs> <laughs> I will fuck this up. Um, yes, no, not I'm, like me. Well, no, that is actually part of the job. You got to fuck it up a little, a little bit, bit in a charming way. Mm. Okay, all right. Let's see if I can be but charming. Don't pre-read. You got to read it all no, for no, the no. first time on the pod. Please. I haven't read anything. I promise. Um, so we've got a few here. Uh, the first one is from Liam Goodwin, who's written "Life's Good." Real name: Liam Goodwin. <laughs> so love that. Thank you, Liam. And that's is, has he also given himself a title? His title is Lawman of the Pod. Oh, oh, sweet talking lawman. Yeah, love right. that. Don't know if you're a, some sort of there's a new law lawman in town enforcement officer, or if you're just a bit of a stickler for rules. <laughs> Either way, I respect you. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, don't hurt me. And Liam this week has given us a quote. Oh yes, fantastic. And the quote is. Coming back to where you started is not the same as never leaving. Hmm, Terry Pratchett. Oh, Oh. geez, Terry Pratchett is mentioned a lot uh, on this show. I reckon that's the second or third time he's been fact, quote, or questioned. (laughs) Probably, to be honest, would have been quoted both times. Has he been questioned? (laughs) And uh, uh, we did a Primates about him as well, about his Discworld series. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and, and that was suggested by a bunch of listeners. The patrons love Terry Pratchett. There's a lot of Pratch heads out there. Oh, you got damn right there is. And he, he can't be too far away from the world of uh, Hitchhiker's Guide as well. Similar sort of English fantasy novelist. Yeah, well, we should mention that this week's uh, book cheat that I just put out yesterday mm. uh, features all three of us. You two were very gracious to uh, appear on my show together. And uh, we talked about Douglas Adams' The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which is... Probably one of the top five most requested books I've, I've got. After Plugger, the Tony Lockett story. Yeah. yeah. But I'm saving that for the big 100. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a really fun episode to do. But that is, that's a, I really liked it. I, the more I learn about Terry Pratchett, the more I like him. I think he's, uh, he's a very fun, funny writer. I haven't read a lot of Terry Pratchett. But also, or he, any, I should say. <laughs> I was going to say, I haven't read any. He's got good wisdom. Mm. Yeah, from that quote. I read I see that. The Masquerade when I was backpacking the first time. P- picked it up on one of those uh, hostel book swap yeah, things. Yeah, I love those. Uh, what did you swap for it or did you not? Uh, I think I... Um, what's the what's the guy who wrote uh, High Fidelity? Uh, Nick Hornby. Nick yes. Hornby. His book about being an Arsenal supporter or I think it was an Arsenal supporter. I forget what it's called. Fever Pitch maybe? No. Oh, okay. I can't remember. But it was... A book about it was sort of like a his football supporting biography. I swapped that for for the Pratch for the Pratch. Love that. Um, yeah, but that was great. Great fact That's from nice, uh, nice Life's quote. Good. Thank you so much. Thank you, Life's LG. Good. Uh, our second fact Twitter question comes from Dan Peterson. Dan has given, his, given himself the title of unofficial director of Saints fan recruiting. Okay, <laughs> appreciate any help we can get. Wow, He's totally worked it. Worked on us this week. Yeah. Get on board the Saint Train. Um, and Dan <laughs> <laughs> Dan's fact is Oh, another fact. Why well, I we had a quote before, sorry. <laughs> oh, a new fact. Ooh. Oh no, what have I done? I'm not good at this. There we go. Perfectly While this capable. podcast has thrown its support fully behind the Gary South Shore Railcats, I have decided to use this platform to advocate for my hometown team. I am, of course, referring to Gary's North Division rivals and reigning American Association. Oh, the St. Paul Saints. <laughs> Our I, arch I didn't even nemesis. get through the sentence. Is it? Yes, that's what he's talking about. Professional baseball champion. Uh, they're referring to Gary's North Division rivals and reigning American Association of Independent Professional Baseball Champions, the St. Paul Saints. I'd like to offer up a fact about the Saints. 
Jess can feel free to let me know if it's fun or not. Thank you for respecting. The fact is, the Saints are partly owned by comedy legend Bill Murray. Oh. And he is... Uh, and he has better known to sh- or been known to show up unannounced on the opening day of the season to work as a ticket taker. <laughs> Dan, That's fun. That is. Oh, sorry. Matt, Excuse me. Unfucking believable. <laughs> sorry. sorry about that. Well, what did you? What do you? What do you think? Please enlighten me. What do you think? Well, to me, that is unquestionably a fun fact. Oh, unquestionably, unquestionably, oh. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I bloody got you, didn't I? You did. You were a bit scared, weren't you? I was you? squirming. <laughs> um, I've got to say, that team sounds great, but I've got to give a shout out to my favourite team, which is, of course, another rival to the Railcats from uh, the American Association of Independent uh, Professional Baseball, the Wichita Wingnuts. Oh, go Love Wingnuts. Love that. Yeah, they're the top three for me. Yeah, great team. Wichita. Wichita's Wichita fun w- to say, too. Mm. Where is Wichita. Who knows? Yeah. Oh, it's in America. Probably people from Wichita, I'd hope. It's in, yeah, it's in the United States of America. Anyway, oh. thank you so and much. Wichita line. To Dan Peterson. We had a long uh, Wichita conversation the week you were off sick. Oh. Long Wichita. We we're talking about Witchy Woman by the Eagles <laughs> <laughs> and other things. <laughs> <laughs> and other things. Oh, yeah. Witchy, yeah. Wichita Woman by Glenn Campbell, I think, and other other such things. Anyway, that is, that's great. I mean, St. Mm. Paul, they're a very good team. Uh, if they were in any other league, they would be my team. But, you know, the, I'm a Cats man till, till death do us part. So. Yeah. Fair enough. Go Cats. Go Rail Cats. But Dan, great fact. Thank you for that. And thank you for your support. Um, All right, on to our next one. It is from James Edwards. Hi, James. Hi, James. The best laugh in the biz. Well, James has given himself the title of Chief Avoider of Live Streaming Shows by Sleeping. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Because last time we did... Famously missed them. Yeah, last time we did a run of live stream shows, there would always be a comment uh, not long after of James going, I missed it! (laughs) Um, Not surprising. In he his defence, the middle of the night, right? <laughs> yeah, it's three yeah, yeah. a.m. where he, he is in England, so. so understandable. But at at my stand up show last year in London, he, uh, yeah, he, he I'd I'd almost um, travel around with him, planting him in the audience, <laughs> just like a cheerleader. Great laugher. Great laugher, and uh, he has given us a question. Okay. Says, having spent an inordinate amount of time helping companies rearrange working environments to suit the new normal of social distancing, I wonder how you guys think things will change after restrictions are lifted. Oh, James. Um, look, restrictions have been put back in place in Victoria. Um, so he says, do you think we'll, we will be able to enjoy live comedy shows in the same way we used to? I'm especially thinking about Matt's brilliant stand-up gig at the Bill Murray last year. <laughs> oh, the Bill, Bill Murray. Murray. Uh, where That's the audience funny. was packed in like sardines. Yeah, that I mean, that was that is really rammed in. You were there that night? They do squeeze them in there. Absolutely, mm. there's people in front of you and on the sides of you. It's yeah, a real arena spectacular. Yeah, <laughs> in, in the round. <laughs> so I love that venue, but yeah, I, I wonder how long it will be. I keep assuming it's going to be back to that before too long. But really, until there's a vaccine. It sounds like that's unlikely. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it's it's kind of interesting to see how many people and organisations have like just figured out different ways to do stuff. Like people here at Stupid Old have come up with a way to do live streams, and lots of places are doing that, and sort of Zoom gigs and stuff like that. But I think it'll be a while before we go back to how it used to be. Yeah, a long time probably. And I think in other states in Australia, it's starting to happen. Gigs are returning. Nature is healing. But are they spreading them out still a bit? Like I people think are they have to distancing? be a little bit spread out. Yeah. yeah, but it means I mean, unless they go backwards like we have, which is I guess a very real chance. Mm. Maybe they'll they'll keep being able to up the capacities slowly. And I watch. <laughs> or watch on Jealousy from afar. Jealously. <laughs> Jealously. Hmm. Um, hey, James jealousy. just adds at the end, thanks for everything you do to keep us laughing through this weird situation. Oh, thanks, thanks James. James. Thanks for your support. Yeah, and thanks. And it's very comforting to think of you laughing away in England. <laughs> and <laughs> a good question too. And uh, annoying your neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine being annoyed by someone just sounding so joyous. Yeah. 
joyful choice. I've had that, like, because, you know, I, this laugh has been with me for a long time and people in school being like, oh, God, you laugh so loud. I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry I'm having a nice time. <laughs> yeah. Fucking kill joy. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm sorry that you have no sense of humour. Oh, did you not get it? Oh. Girls' schools are very bitchy. Um, oh. But it's okay. I turned out fine. Right. And your laugh? What a great feature. Great feature. It's right up there with James Edwards. This is... Oh, I I agree. I think I mean I I definitely think his is above me, but I'm maybe a close fifth. Um, <laughs> our final fact word question for today comes from Roy Phillips. Hi, Roy. Roy is giving himself the title of sole controller of all automatic doors. Oh, fantastic! That is a massive responsibility. How do you possibly keep up with all of them? We must have sort of Superman type. Some sort you of know when, to um, be able to get around. Bruce Almighty, when he's p- replying to emails and he's oh. typing really fast, I reckon it must be like that. Maybe he's got Bruce Almighty slash God-like <laughs> skills. <laughs> I can only assume, yes. Uh, and Roy has given us another quote. And this quote is, Good judgment comes from experience and the vast majority of experience comes from bad judgment. That is a quote from Will Rogers. Do you want that again? Yes. Yeah, yeah let me hear it. Good judgment comes from experience, and the vast majority of experience comes from bad judgment. Okay, I guess that's like you learn from your mistakes. Yeah, that's great. You make a bad judgment, you fail, you learn from it. Lady, you make a good judgment. I like that. Yeah, I think think that's good. I mean, it'd be great to just always, you know, sometimes when people say like you you need mistakes and that's why you don't have regrets. Mm. But if you could, like in this this sort of... um, mythical world you're imagining why not just get things right the first time every time then you don't need to learn from mistakes because you never make them yeah i wish you could i wish you could actually learn from other people's mistakes i do sometimes Rather, but they've, yeah they've yeah. got to be pretty big ones my dad told me so much as a teenager that i was like whatever dad and then i grew up and went ah shit yeah i didn't learn from those kind of mistakes no. dad look- was like every time you earn some money put a bit of it aside i was like whatever <laughs> and then i needed to buy a car and i was like oh no <laughs> dad <laughs> look after your ears matt play loud music you'll have hearing loss <laughs> all right dad whatever dad i can't hear you dad <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying dad what? Etc. My ears will live forever. <laughs> <laughs> or the opposite. I don't care. Live fast. My ears will die young. I don't care. <laughs> Thank you very much to uh, Liam Goodwin, Dan Peterson, James Edwards, Roy Phillips. Thank you so much. What a great list of facts, quotes and questions. Mm. And yeah, you can get involved with that at patreon.com slash do go on pod on the Sydney Scheinberg rest in peace level. And may he rest in peace. <laughs> Another thing we like to do for people that support us on the show at the arse prod level or above. Arsh. Says, arsh. Yes, I am Sean Connery. Money Penny. <laughs> Money Penny, bring me the arsh producer. <laughs> uh, people that support the show on the arse prod level or above, we give them a shout out and a thank you for supporting the show. It's funny that the arse prod level still exists because that, that was named after your position at the project, but you're you're just full prod now. Just yeah? full prod. Thank you so much. <laughs> your ass, your ass out. <laughs> My ass <laughs> has been hanging out for a long time. <laughs> Surprising I'm not having been fired actually. Yeah. We're going to start if this is okay with you to going to start uh, doing 3 each. Mm-hmm. So we get through 9 a week just because it is getting away from us a little bit where um we just want to make sure we, we get to all the shout-outs. Yeah, thanks so much for everyone that's been signing up. Mm. I have fun saying their names because they're all good. And I love Jess's games. What game are you going to play this week, Jess? Ooh, that's a tough one. Maybe um, maybe what they would take to the island. You yeah. know how like the boys only took a couple of sacks of bananas? <laughs> yeah. Some coconuts? Okay, maybe, maybe these nine sac- people are also shells. in the boat. And so on top of the bananas, a couple of coconuts and a gas cooker... They also bring right. some stuff. Does okay. that, is that fun? I don't know. And they're all there yeah. together. So these nine people, there'll be women and men. Yes. But they're all boys. They're today. all boys today. They're honorary boys today. <laughs> Teenage boys with confusing emotions. <laughs> and confusing hairstyles. Yeah. God. And it was the 60s. You know? Oh, yeah. It'd be awesome. <laughs> Different time. Well, well, yeah. Well, they wouldn't have been able to cut their hair. 
Well, unless we pack them a hairdressing kit. Okay, yeah. well, let's see. Uh, so, may I kick this off? Please. Well, I'd love to thank from Como in Western Australia, mm. Jamie Griffiths. Jamie oh, Griffiths. Co-Como. That's where I want to go. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, Jamie's from Como, so maybe they bring a comb oh, we in their, their hairdressing kit. Oh, okay, for their moustache, yep. <laughs> A moustache comb. Comb It's less useful than the hairdressing kit, but it is adorable. Well, what are the hairdressing? Well, that's part of the hairdressing yeah, kit. Yeah. Oh, it's all in there. Yeah. There's a normal comb, moustache comb, mm-hmm. scissors, uh-huh. hair dryer, straightener, yes. uh-huh. curling wand. Yes. Uh, shampoo conditioner, but like good stuff. Pube clippers. Pube clippers, obviously. We uh, have pube clippers. <laughs> They've also got dry shampoo if you can't be bothered fully washing your hair. You get it. But you still want to go out on a Saturday night on the, on the island. This is how yes. we know you live with a woman. That's right. <laughs> That stuff smells fantastic. Yeah, it oh, does. fantastic. Mm. I I should I just had a thought. We should let listeners know that if they wanted to watch uh, today's episode, they can um, buy a ticket uh, at Sauce Presents. There'll be a link in the show notes, mm. and you can get a season pass to watch that one and the following three weeks if you want as well. Yeah. And it's not just the bonus episode, or not the episode, because there's a bonus sort of episode. At the end of it, we recorded a, um, well, it was about 40 minutes worth of a, a game that we call Fact Finder. Fact Finder? Fact Finder. <laughs> where uh, some of the Patreon supporters uh, suggested topics, and we all went away and uh, researched a topic, uh, a fact on that topic. Mm-hmm. And um, then the people at home voted for whose was the most interesting. It was a lot of fun. I loved the interactive part of it as well, like waiting for people to vote and, ooh. Who's Ooh, it going to be? Yeah. It's exciting. It made it feel like a, a live show. Yeah. Mm. It's really Which fun. it was, I guess, in yeah. a lot of ways. But uh, we haven't had that feeling for a while, so. Yeah, so that that's <laughs> uh, that's definitely worth doing if people are keen on that. Um, and I reckon there's a few bits that Jess would have had to have edited it out that you wouldn't <laughs> have heard. But they, are, I think we can't edit them from the yeah. live stream. They just remain there. So um, get the earmuffs ready if, you, if, if you've got any young children watching with you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Jamie Griffiths. Thank with you, Jamie. The, thank you so much for uh, having the thought to bring your hairdressing kit yeah, really for the rest handy. of the boys. <laughs> really, really handy. As well. Uh, I would also love to thank from Victoria Park in Western Australia, oh, no, Claire, no, no. no surname. Claire. Like a, like a Madonna. Uh, does not need a surname. And Got I like there. that. What if she brings a ship in a glass bottle? Oh, okay. That serves zero purpose. Yeah, because you can't use it for water, no. and you can't use it for a ship. Yeah, but nice to look at. You got to build it though. Oh, one of those ones. So it's an like activity. It's an activity. It's an art project. It's something to pass the time. Yeah. Okay. It's fifteen months out there. God, you are useless in this. <laughs> <laughs> you are no help. I <laughs> brought a hairdressing kit. <laughs> you were clear bought a, sh- clear bought a <laughs> ship in a bottle, and it doesn't even have the ship yet. She's got to build it. So that's a bottle. She's got a bottle and some bits of. I reckon if she's smart, she just uses the bottle to catch rainwater. Yeah, that would be good. Creates a funnel with some leaves. Well, that would ruin the artwork. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not wrong. <laughs> Is it possible she could make the ship out of the bottle? No. Okay. What was the uh, <laughs> no, yeah. when the Simpsons? No. Who makes the ship in the bottle? And it's S- Bob or Sancho Bob. Bob. Sancho Bob. He's making Westminster Abbey. Oh, right. and the clocks are even accurate. And <laughs> as he's setting it, he gets knocked and he knocks it all over. Uh, That's very good. That's Hopefully, great. I think that might be our first Simpsons reference. We needed to get something then for Jacob, our official <laughs> Simpsons <laughs> reference. I took Talia. the mustache comb as a Simpsons reference. Oh, do you remember that? Yeah. What'd you get? Mustache comb? What'd you get? Big mustache? Want to comb my mustache? <laughs> <laughs> After they go to like a time zone type yeah, arcade that's right. place. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Claire. And uh, my third final uh, shout out today from the fair city of Adelaide in South Australia. Beautiful city. One of my favourite capital cities in Australia. Um, I mean, they're all very good though, admittedly. Yeah. I'd love to thank Xander. Xander. Xander brings a sander. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, my goodness. I can't <laughs> wait to start helping these poor people out. <laughs> They've had three things <laughs> and so far. Yeah, but, I mean, they, you know, they, they they can chop down a tree and then sand it down. But and they make can't it. chop it down. Well, what are they chopping it down maybe with? Maybe there'll be something later they could chop down a tree with. You couldn't have just brought a whole, like, all... all t- a toolkit. Tool toolkit. I know, but it was fun to say. Yeah. You I love admit it's fun Xander to say. Xander brings a sander along with the rest of his toolkit. Yeah. In all his right, toolkit. Is it too late? No, not at all. So it's a toolkit. And he makes it, he from makes, Makita. 
Wow. Give me my Makita back, Mac, is what Xander would say to Mac. after lending Mac one of his tools. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think Xander would bring a sander and he'd work exclusively on making verandas <laughs> for the island. For shelter. Hmm. Perfect. What, this isn't a Dr. Seuss book, Dave. Or is it? Is it? It is, is now. Book? It feels like it. Can I thank some people as well? Oh, that would make me feel so good. Thank you. Uh, thank you to Xander again. I would love to thank uh, from Bandura oh, in the ACT. God's country. I'd love to thank Celeste and Josh Van Greensven. Amazing names. Celeste and Josh. Two for one. Celeste and Josh, man. Are they getting two items or are they bringing one collectively? Well, yeah, no, they're, they're bringing a, jo- a, cu- a joint couple uh-huh. email account. <laughs> <laughs> so that we- they can be contacted on the yeah. island. <laughs> well, Celeste and Josh at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> Along with their computer that's hooked up to the internet with unlimited power. Mm. Love the idea of them rocking up at the island. The boys being like, "Oh, thank goodness you're here. Have you brought any food or shelter we can have?" Yeah, we've got. We've brought a couple's Gmail. <laughs> now they got a joint Facebook. <laughs> 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 That's the worst. It's always Graham and Jean. <laughs> yeah. So good. <laughs> nah, good. Oh, I've you. just double checked. Uh, their email is not a joint account. Thank goodness. Thank God. Yeah. Mercilessly ripped. Jeez, they got ripped there, didn't they? People with joint accounts. When we I, got them. When I made, well, not made up, but just put together Celeste and Josh at Gmail, I had a quick glance. Mm-hmm. I was like, not their email. Thank God. Not um, their value, not their not email. Their value. Not their value. Email not their is email not your address. value, people. Thank you very much. <laughs> your email address is not your value. <laughs> I wish it was mine because. Uh, Mine's great. Sexgod69 <laughs> at hotmail.com. <laughs> 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 said you were a Mensa in the sheets? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but I stand by it. <laughs> it's one of our live shows. <laughs> is, that a, is that good? Or <laughs> genius. Genius in bed. Sounds like you're overthinking. Oh, you should see him work in the yeah. bed. Oh. It's a real master. It's, yeah. it's art. <laughs> it's thank you very much, Celeste and Josh. I'd also love to thank from... Uh, what's MI? Oh, it's either Missouri... Missouri. Uh, one of the we or Michigan. Forget. We always, always it is Michigan. Damn Michigan. It. So you got Missouri, Michigan. What are the? There's more MIs than that though. The Montana's the only MO. You got uh, Massachusetts, Minnesota, Minnesota, and I think there's. Is there not four? Miami. <laughs> no, that's not one. Uh, there's uh, three MAs. Four MIs and oh one MO. God, I'm pretty that's sure. a lot. Well, what a way to remember it. <laughs> Three MIs. Missouri. Michigan. Michigan. Uh, Mich- Mis- oh, the Mississippi. Mississippi and Minnesota. Yes. But from Michigan. Love to thank Paul Jackby. <laughs> oh, Paul Jackby. Paul Jackby. This man does not. Need vowels in his name. He does not need vowels, but what he does need and what he brings to the I mean, table the a. is. And the U. And another A. But in Jack B, there's J-A-C-K-B. Mm. He brings a professional uh, chef set, which includes all cookery, oh. crockery, knivery, and... Cutlery! Sto- <laughs> <laughs> Cutlery. <laughs> oh, the real one? <laughs> I was going to say stovery. Yeah. He also brings a lot of sass, connivery. Connivery. Oh. He's, yeah. he's, he's watched Survivor before. Yeah. He yeah. stab a few people in the back to survive that thing. He's ready to play the game, even though everyone's like, dude, we're not, we're playing, not playing, playing a game. No one is at winning or out playing. We're we surviving help. together. <laughs> the host is not coming here. The tribe will not be speaking. Do not Stop the party. voting who you want to leave. <laughs> it's all, mean. He holds people's names up on a piece of paper. <laughs> no one can leave. <laughs> Paul, no one can Paul, leave. Paul, are you... If you've got an issue with someone, <laughs> just talk to them, please. Stop just holding their name Wait, up on a piece of paper. Well, you've got a system. You walk to the other end of the island and cool down. Stop wasting all the paper. <laughs> I'm not a cameraman. Stop, stop <laughs> addressing me stop <laughs> like doing... I'm the viewers at home. <laughs> there are no viewers at home. <laughs> but, don't, well, don't write my name. I'm, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Love you, Wayne uh, Paul. He won't, Thanks, Paul. Uh, he won't be the cameraman that he is here to be. So I'm voting off Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paul. And finally, I would love to thank from Clearwater, Florida. Oh, great name. Sounds Doesn't lovely. Doesn't sound like paradise? Sounds so nice. And I hope you love it there. Jason Frey. Oh, Jason Frey. Piano. Oh, great choice. Full <laughs> grand? Full baby grand? Of course. Well, I feel like from the rule that we've created, mm-hmm. it, that's just the tip of the iceberg. He's also brought... An axe. An orchestra. <laughs> 
<laughs> he built the piano <laughs> himself. Oh, like, an orchestra. Yeah, that's well, there's good. a full <laughs> orchestra, including you know all the Conductor. players. <laughs> you open up the the uh, <laughs> the piano, and inside it's not a piano. He's bought like fifty guns or something. Yeah. It's like check this out. All right, I'm gonna shoot chickens. <laughs> All right, you don't have to, but I'm gonna. You can just catch them. They're slow. So, oh, he's got a full orchestra, and they're and including instruments and players, but all of their instruments convert into weapons. Wow! You know, Imagine like death by a tuba. I was gonna say tuba. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Stop! <French> horn. <laughs> Beep. <laughs> Flute would be the worst. What about piccolo? <laughs> oh, Everyone's yes. like, "That's oh, you can't do much with that." Bang, straight to the aorta. That's, what is it? A small coffee? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a very small coffee. So, thank you very much, Jason. Dave, do you want to bring it home? Let's bring it home with from uh, Ruppin Yup in Victoria. I'd like to thank Bradley Teasdale. Oh, Bradley Teasdale. Bradley didn't realize you lived in God's country. Ruppin Yup. No, I didn't say that right. What was it? Ruppin Yup. Ruppin Yup. Beautiful part of the world. Uh, Bradley has brought with brought with him um, the uh, essential John Farnham on CD, oh. three discs, okay. and, and a way to play it. Yep. Oh, he has made a <laughs> horrible <laughs> mistake. <laughs> oh, Bradley, Jason what have he, you done? Jason over here's got the whole Philharmonic Orchestra. Bradley's like, mate, that's nothing. I got fucking Whispering Jack's greatest hits. I got Farnsy. So you and he, it was a three disc set, didn't you say? Yeah, so the it was, essential. It was the Greatest hits, then the sort of the B sides and rarities, and then was was the third disc the, live? The even greater hits. Oh wow! Yeah, I remember them coming out. It was a real big deal. Oh yeah. This will be the last the time, time, maybe the last time. I don't know. You know, that's the first version of that song that I heard was <laughs> the John Farnham. Yeah, I think so for me too. I don't remember. I don't remember hearing the original version until. After oh, maybe I did. Who knows? To me, that is the original. That is, yeah. That's you know? the definitive version. Farnsy makes it his own. Yes, he it's does. It's not a cover. It's a Farnsy song. Yes. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of like everyone who came before him sort of pre-covered him. Yeah, and then once he sang it, they Esp- were like, oh, we bow down to you. Especially the Stones. Yes. Their version was, I mean, a pretty good cover. What a tribute. It was what a beautiful cute. It was tribute. cute. It was yeah. cute. Yeah. Cute attempt. So thanks to Bradley. You Unfortunately, uh, the front man, whatever his name is, oh, I Mike, don't know. G- Gary something. Yeah, Mike, Mike Garrison or whatever. Mike Farnham. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, he does not have the voice. Apparently, okay. he's got some good moves. Mm. Well, I'm yet to see him. But the voice does not match. Yeah. Mike Gagger. 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 <laughs> Mike Gagger. Mike Gagger. I love his work. It's a good name. It's yeah. a good name. <laughs> he's pretty good. Unfortunately for him, best thing about him. Yeah. <laughs> But that stops there. Oh, wow. Uh, Bradley, thanks for your contribution uh, to us and also to the island. That three disc set will keep us warm through Jeez, many of this I hope nights. this next person brings some sort of a CD player. Uh, and from Farmington, Connecticut, mm-hmm. uh, Brianna Spencer. Brianna Spencer brings a record player. So close. Oh, <laughs> but no <laughs> records. No. So we've got the three disc CD <laughs> and then a record. What an unsatisfying <laughs> list of. <laughs> Items we've got going on here. They try putting the CDs on. Oh, I just started a fire. Yeah. Well, yeah, they invent they invent fire. Yeah, And everyone knew that. I mean, as soon as Farnsey recorded those, his producer did say, "You've just created fire." Yeah. And uh, yeah, history repeated itself (laughs) on the island. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thanks to Brianna from uh, Connecticut. Thanks for supporting us. And uh, one of the two COs, along with Colorado. All right, nerd. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, my my expert uh, my expert category on one of those shows where you get to pick one of those Einstein Factor mm. is U.S. states. <laughs> <laughs> Even though last week we were like, oh, there's only one that starts with L. Oh, hang on, no, there's seven. Oh no, <laughs> twelve. No, they all start with L. I think <laughs> <laughs> every single one of them. Lock it in. <laughs> no, there's only one L. Only one L. Is that right? Louisiana. Yeah, it was a different one, I think, that we said. Yeah, it was uh, I. I. I said there's only one I, but there's three Four. I's. Four I's. Idaho. Oh, my God. Is the first. I was the last. Indiana. And Illinois. And Illinois. Illinois. But uh, from uh, another side of the... Or part of the planet, from Dungarvan, I- Waterford in Ireland, I would like to thank Thomas Goodall. 
Thomas Goodall. Thomas. Thomas Goodall. All right. I know I'm going to bring back some bloody sense to this discussion. Yeah. All right, Dad. <laughs> and uh, think, you're no fun, Dad. Oh, okay. No, you've given me inspiration. What would my dad bring? <laughs> Beer. Uh, <laughs> A trailer with a tarp. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a dad thing. And uh, and seven Oki straps. <laughs> Oki, Oki straps. <laughs> um, they can tow anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, <they're laughs> no car. <laughs> <laughs> it's so useless. We'll get one of the, I, I used to have so much fun when dad would he, he'd need to use the trailer for something. And it'd be like, he'd like... Come out, boys. We need you as a counterweight. So you'd sit in the back of the trailer. So because it, when it's empty, it's front heavy. Mm. Oh, of course. So you counterweight it at the back, and then he'd pull you along. It was a real thrill. <laughs> yeah, I grew up in, in, in the olden days. <laughs> <laughs> now, the biggest thrill you got was when Dad said, "Want to ride in the back of the trailer?" As I pull it up the driveway, he'd back up his horse, and uh, you'd be on. <laughs> Put it in reverse. <laughs> it's a horse. Oh, Thomas, thank you for bringing the trailer. Oh, uh, Thomas, good. With hockey straps. With hockey straps and a tarp. So. Yeah, so that's pretty good. You can tarp would be good, actually. You put a lot of stuff in the trailer, too. Yeah. Firewood, keep it dry. <laughs> <laughs> Such a dead <laughs> What's your favourite cold place on? <laughs> Monster Zyme. <Zantra. laughs> thank you, Silent. Firewood, keep it dry. <laughs> We've got, uh, we got to find that clip for the non I think that's. That's kind of in the Australian zeitgeist, right? But oh, due I, to Tony Martin yeah. playing it on repeat on one of his podcasts or something. What's your favourite? <laughs> what's your favourite Coldplay song? Mine's a scientist. <laughs> so legendary Australian cricketer Shane Warne, who was uh, one of the record take wi- uh, maybe Australia's highest ever Test wicket taker. Yeah, it's the second of all time, right? And uh, yeah, to Morley, and he. Um, he had a he had a talk show for a little while. He's also a great Saints player. He played in the under nineteens for the Saints, and he had a talk show briefly. And his friend uh, Chris Martin from Coldplay was a guest, and he asked Chris Martin. He said, "What's your favourite Coldplay song?" Mine's a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I bring this up every time you bring that up. And that is, I saw Coldplay four or five years ago, and Shane Warne came out and played harmonica with the band. I don't remember you ever saying was that. that. I feel like I'd remember that. I remember I could feel it was a stadium and I could still feel the crowd was baffled. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going, why are you here? Is that Warney? Warney. They come out to this smaller little stage to do like an acoustic song. The Sheik of Tweak. And then, and then, yeah, they're all playing acoustic instruments and then from out from underneath, Shane Warne. That's so that if it was baffling. Huey Lewis, like a famous harmonica player, then yeah, sure. That's fucking Warney. <laughs> Warney. So funny. So weird. He's also, there was a Coldplay um, concert where they got Michael J. Fox out and they played uh, the songs that Michael J. Fox played as Marty McFly. That's a, See, that's cool. At the Undersea Ball or whatever it was that's in the cool. first Back to the Future. Earth Angel and Johnny Be Good. So, oh. um, Chuck uh, Berry's classic. Lizzo in LA last year and she brought out Macaulay Culkin. No context. He just danced for about a minute and then left. Oh, the guy <laughs> from the pizza band? Yeah. The pizza band. I, you went and saw Lizzo in LA. Yeah, that's my... It's a wild story. That's my last concert before oh, the world went to shit. That's good. You can't go to live concerts in Australia she already, anymore. Because she, she took a while to get big in Australia at least where was she on the on the ride was it, she already exploding yeah already huge but the dates had been booked way earlier in the year so it was only about 2 or 3000 venue I imagine oh, only like 2 or 3000 just a so like, but yeah, that is tiny for her i imagine uh, and she i remember she played a song and she goes this song is number 1 on the billboard charts right now and i was like i've never seen an artist play the number 1 song at the time yeah oh, that's yeah, pretty cool that's was, so she just absolutely exploded yeah i was going to see the darkness and then that got cancelled uh, i think it, faith no more is the only one that i had a ticket to that got cancelled yeah right oh, i missed the national have I you seen the national you going to that weren't you i don't think i've seen the national i like uh, but they were they were oh, sorry they were they cancelled in april Right. My Harry Potter and the Cursed Child tickets have just been uh, postponed until March of next year. Yeah, right. <laughs> God, I, hope we'll we'll I hope so. They really yeah. do. Anyway. Anyway, thanks to everyone that supports the show on Patreon. The only other thing to do is to oh, check yeah. if anyone's coming in to our famed Triptych Club. Okay, well, I just double-checked this. Dave, do you want to explain what it is? Um, Maybe, yeah, explain 
what it is. <laughs> Thank you so much. And then Jess tells us what drink and hors d'oeuvres we're having. And yep. you'll, you've got a, a band booked, hopefully. Certainly do. Now, the Triptych Club, it's where if people have been supporting the show for three consecutive years on that shout out Asprod level or above, we like to thank them again by inducting them into sort of a club slash hall of fame slash fun zone, mm-hmm. which is a, a little place that we've set up. And once you're in, you can never leave. But. You don't want to leave. No. Yeah. I mean, we've never really encountered anybody who's wanted to leave. I suppose if someone did, we would let them, but... But, you know, you, honestly, you do not want to. Honestly, that's a request we have not had yet. It's a, it's a club made out of heaven. Yeah. Made out of heaven. Oh, that's how good it is. So, um, food-wise, food and drink-wise, uh, obviously, we're having some sort of banana dish, maybe just bananas. Banana Sundays. Oh, yes. And drink wise, um, rum in coconuts. Oh, yes. I love any sort of rum drink, any coconut drink, please. I hate both, but um, <laughs> you can you can go to town. Wow, I love them. You know, I don't I don't cater just to my needs. Of course, it's the people's. And I've also done that by booking our musical act tonight, which is of course Coldplay, <laughs> featuring <laughs> Shane Warne. But Coldplay are more of a backing band, and it's Shane Warne harmonica solo the whole time. Fuck yes, they will not be playing any Coldplay songs. Sadly, could we please get Hugh Craig the <laughs> Third as backup harmonica, maybe just off stage? Filling out his sound a little bit. Hugh Craig III, of course, the front man from Huey Lewis and the News. The titular Huey Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> All right, he can do a backup harmonica. And you might know what? They might even do Warney's favourite, The Scientist. <laughs> Mine's a scientist. So. The Scientist is a fine song. Yeah, it is. I don't think it's my favourite Coldplay. But I haven't thought that much about it, to be honest. Mm. Yet here I am. Anyway, Matt, have you found them? Yeah, there's quite a few. Great. Welcome them in. Okay. Well, firstly, I'd love to uh, invite into the club. Wait, did you say what I'll do? Yeah, we're having banana sundays. Banana sundays and, and coconut. rum and coconuts. Yeah. Oh, and you said the music was going to be Huey Lewis and the News, and Shane Warne might Coldplay. open for him. Is that right? No, the other way around. Huh? You got to cater to the times. Shane okay. Warne's big right now. Huey Lewis as <laughs> Shane Warne played sports. That's what he's famous for. He's got that in common with Huey Lewis. <laughs> That's um, actually a better connection than I ever thought we'd get. <laughs> uh, we mentioned Listen Now's starting season two uh, this week, started on Monday, starting with Huey Lewis and the News of Sports. And we're going through the top 20 rock albums from the 80s as voted by listeners. Um, Love that. So Huey Lewis and the News of Sports came in at number 20. And it was a real fun time. Uh, okay, so entering into the club, hold up that velvety rope. Okay, but my arms are getting tired, so... From Holt in the Australian Capital Territory, it's Robert Riddell. Robert Riddell. Oh, the Riddler. From Piedmont, Oklahoma, it's Oliver Roselle. Oh, the Rosella. <laughs> oh, that's nice. From birds. Oh, lovely. the oh, birds. Isle of Wight in Great Britain, it is Harry Green. The greenery is here. From Rockledge... In Florida, United States, it's Tony Martinez. Martinez. <laughs> From Homebush, <laughs> New South Wales, Australia, it's Kaylin Rankins. <laughs> Ranka. Oh, the rank. The rank. From Auckland in New Zealand, oh gosh, it really? is Mark Towel. Oh, always carry a towel. From Honiton in Devon, where they do scones right, cream first, then the jam. <laughs> It's Michael Killen. Oh, killing it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> From it's Carrick Fergus. Part of the show. <laughs> Carrick Fergus in County Antrim. I think in Northern Ireland, Great Britain, it is Ian Irving. Ooh. <laughs> 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 um, that's tonight we'll be Irving Ian. <laughs> From Sankt Olof in SE. Is that Sweden? Is that. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Can't, like in Sweden, it is Lucas Bankston. Oh, Bankston. I'm cashing out tonight <laughs> with Bankston. You can Bankston on that. Oh, Bankston that. You can Bankston that. <laughs> yeah. And oh, we got that, guys. Finally. <laughs> we are professionals. From Prosser in Washington, the United States, it's Patrick Burnett. <laughs> I got nothing. No. <laughs> 
Burn it. Burn it. <laughs> We're going to burn it tonight. Yeah. Burn it at both ends. <laughs> You're the man. <laughs> <laughs> You're the man. Adam. <laughs> That's so good. It's so stupid. It's my favourite bit of the show. Is watching Dave's face as he sits there listening and he's, the cogs are turning. Oh, it's, it's very a, good. That's two weeks in a row where the first few names it was like, God, this is so easy. I'm, I'm so good at this. <laughs> And then it's like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, no. Burn, burn. I think it's just the pressure building because I reckon no. you you turned something. You turned. <laughs> what, there was something that you turned in it. Um, what is Martinez? What was that? <laughs> Martinez. <Martinez-a. laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not good. You just, you just went straight into it and then burn it. Like, could be. You burn, you know. Burning yeah, yeah. up the place, fire, you're on fire, burnt, you know, that was a real easy, and you're like, well, there's nothing here. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the well is dry. Oh, it's very funny. I thought you were doing a bit, huh. but it just turns out you were out of, out of juice. Well, no, I mean, I was doing a bit at first, but then I realised, hang on, I've got nothing. <laughs> I've got nothing here. Uh, so thanks to everyone that does support the show, and welcome to the greatest club on earth. And we are, we're currently talking to someone about uh, redesigning our website. So maybe we'll have to ask them about oh, yes. having a page for the Triptych Club. Got to, to mention that. Gold sparkly font, which hasn't been invented yet. But hopefully this, I mean, this will be the real test of how good this guy is, eh? Yeah. yeah. Can you do gold sparkly font? Then, uh, yeah, you're the man for us. <laughs> <laughs> you're the web designer for us. You're the only one. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, you'll have to design a new algorithm, but we'll see how we done. go. Anyway, anyway, um, as per usual, if you want to get in touch, you can do so at all of our social medias are at do go on pod. We do go on pod at gmail.com and our website is do go on pod dot com. Everything is there and you can also support us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash do go on pod. You guessed it. Um, you guys never let me talk for this long. Please help me. Well, that brings us to the end of the episode. What a fun <laughs> time it has been. Uh, whenever you're listening to this into the future, you should get tickets to our live streams. So much fun, and I think it really heightens the experience. Totally, and we say live stream, but you can also catch up on it and have it forever. So even if you're listening to this three years in the future, hopefully that link in the episode, you can still click on it, and you can go back and uh, watch all the old, uh, li- what was a live stream. Yeah. It's basically, it's just a live show. That's right. Yeah, go back, watch it, cancel us. Um, yeah, see a bit of history, I guess. And <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, just catch a bit of history because this will be important. To be like, geez, they're now presidents of the galaxy. Wow, this is where it started. This is where it started. That's this interesting. Is that live stream. That's where the campaign began. <laughs> but until next week, we'll thank you for listening, and I'll say goodbye. Later. Bye. Suck a fuck. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.